In this HVACR training video, we're going over why capacitors fail in air conditioning units. So we're going to verify that this one is good, and then you're going to see it fail in real time while the system is running. Next, we're going to test this capacitor to see if it's still good. We're going to test it while it's under load. So I already have my multimeter set up, so this one's going to read uh, the voltage and current for our compressor coming off of the capacitor, and this one is measuring the voltage and the uh, current for the fan motor. And so you can see one probe is here and one is here, so we're measuring the voltage on the fan and the common, which is connected right here on the capacitor, and we're going to measure the current coming off of the capacitor right here. So this is on the fan terminal. Over here, you see we're measuring the voltage on the Herm and the common, and then we're measuring the current for the compressor. So I'm gonna turn the system on, let it run for five minutes. I'm gonna show you how to test this while it's under load before we see this capacitor fail in real time. The system's been running for about five minutes and you see a current of 6.32 on the Herm which is the start winding of the compressor, and we measure 357.7 volts. So what we do is we take 6.32, and then we multiply that by 2650, and you divide that by the voltage, which is the back EMF from the compressor, and we're at 358. So we have 46.78 microfarads on that capacitor, so that capacitor is good. It's actually rated for 45. Now let's check the fan and you see that we're measuring 0.7 amps at 363.5 volts. So we're gonna take 0.71 times 2650 divided by the back EMF, the back voltage from the fan motor, which is 364.7, 5.15 microfarads on that capacitor for the fan. And so that capacitor is good. And so now what I wanna do is just go ahead and watch the top of that capacitor and we're going to see that capacitor actually fail. That capacitor has failed on the compressor side and also on the fan side. You can hear both the fan and compressor are still running. Now, if I turn this off, uh, the fan and compressor are not gonna be able to turn on this time. So the only reason that they're running was just because the capacitor was installed in the very beginning. Current is very high on both the fan motor and the compressor right now in order to keep them spinning. Now we're gonna allow power to the system and you're gonna see a high current draw, but you're not gonna see the compressor or the fan motor turn on. So I don't know if you can see this on the capacitor, but this one is still good. It's flat down in there, but this one has a mushroom on it right there. And you can see that uh, the terminals on the top are kind of spread apart right here. So this capacitor failed actually due to overheating. On the bottom of that capacitor, you can see it's bulged downwards. Here's a good capacitor. It is completely flat. And so you can see that this capacitor actually failed. And if we were to go over to MFD, so that's microfarads, you can see that we are still reading zero, so this capacitor is bad. Now we're measuring the microfarads for the fan motor, so we have one on common and one on fan, and you can see that we're reading 0.0, .0 microfarads. So when a capacitor fails, they tend to bulge like this right here, or like this, and so that's just due to the heating of the dielectric fluid inside the capacitor. And they don't always fail like that, there may be some that fail with the fluid that basically comes out of the capacitor and other times it'll just look completely fine. It may look a little rusty, may look a little old, and it may be bad, but it may be good. That's why you need to test them. We test them either under load or isolated by themselves and discharged. And so what you need to remember is this right here, the capacitor. So on a dual capacitor, there is two of them and a dual means they have a shared common and so this is the oval style uh, capacitor and then inside there's dielectric fluid and so that's a heat absorption fluid and so these are going to heat up while it's running and on these you're going to see on the inside it's just a little foil and then there is 
a another piece between each layer of the foil in order to separate the electrical sheets and so these are called sheets or panels and you can see there's a huge amount of wraps right here uh, for this capacitor and so it's a little different than a start capacitor because a start capacitor will have uh, thicker metal sheets and so this is from a, a start capacitor that looked like this now I want to get into why a run capacitor would fail and so there's one big misconception about how run capacitors fail and that's when techs say that they fail due to high current. Well, that's not the case. And you saw that during, while I was breaking the capacitor due to high heat at the base of this capacitor, you saw our current was falling. And so as we were losing the capacity within a capacitor on this little foil plate right here, so this is uh, a basically the inside of a capacitor. And so, you know, uh, I have a dual run capacitor right here and it's just sitting in the dielectric fluid. As I was heating this, I was making the plates fail. And so we had less and less surface area on the foil in order to store the electrons. And so really what was happening is the capacitor stored and released less current as I was heating up this capacitor. And so you saw as the current was falling, that capacitor was starting to fail. So it failed on the compressor part of the capacitor first, then after that on the fan side of the capacitor. Let's get into the reasons why a capacitor fails. Number one is the capacitors fail due to high heat. And so if this shroud of the outdoor unit is in the sun all the time, this capacitor is going to be really hot. And so what could happen is the dielectric fluid could expand. It could press outward on the shell of the capacitor like this. Or it could also push down at the bottom at the base right here. And basically this is a telltale sign that a capacitor has failed. Here's another one where you see a mushroom top. And so sometimes a capacitor fails and you won't see any, any reason why. Sometimes when they overheat and the dielectric fluid is trying to get out, basically it might come out of the side and leak out of the side of the capacitor. So that's reason one they could overheat. Problem number two is that the lifespan of a capacitor is limited and it's really relative to the operating temperature. And so the higher the temperature, the lower the lifespan, the less amount of hours that this is going to be able to, to run. And so what's gonna happen is some of the foil is gonna break down over time. And that's why when you take a reading on a capacitor and you notice a lower microfarad reading than what the capacitor is rated for, that means you've lost some of the plating inside. So it's just not gonna last forever. Number three is that you have a voltage rating on the side of the capacitor. So if you have exceeded that voltage rating, that could end up doing damage onto the plates inside of the capacitor. So this, uh, the voltage on say the C and the Herm while this is running is actually the back EMF off of the compressor. And so it's higher than say just the 240 volts in. So we measured around 365 volts while this system was running and that's because there's back emf off of the compressor and so you could also have a lightning strike or some other reason where you have some type of a voltage spike that could do damage to your capacitor another reason could be that you have corroded connections right here so you could have just a bad rusty connection point and so this may or may not make the capacitor fail because what's going to happen is these terminals right here are going to heat up i've seen the weld basically attaching this to the capacitor just melt right off and so that's another way uh, that this could fail is due to a bad connection point located at the top of the capacitor itself. So that's it. You could have overheated the capacitor. You could have reached the life cycle end of the capacitor. You could have had a high voltage, uh, some type of a voltage spike that has ruined the inside of the capacitor, or you could have a loose connection at the top of the capacitor itself. And so these do not fail due to high current because they control the current going to the start winding of the compressor and also the outdoor fan motor. If you want to learn more about capacitors, I have some other videos linked down in the description section below. If you want to learn about HVAC electrical troubleshooting, make sure to check out some of the articles we have over at acservicetech.com slash articles. And while you're there, make sure to check out our book, The Refrigerant Charging is Service Procedures for Air Conditioning. And so we go over how to check the refrigerant charge of a system, how to prepare a system for refrigerant, and also how to troubleshoot a running system. So that's available over at our website at acservicetech.com and also on Amazon. Hope you enjoyed yourself. We'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.